Hey everyone, it's Dean with DCA Crypto. Today is going to be the second video in the Crypto 101 series. Today I want to cover uh, wallets for you guys and how to create a crypto wallet like uh, Exodus and MetaMask and Trust Wallet. And those are kind of like the main three. There's also a Coinbase wallet, which I don't currently use. Uh, so I'm not real familiar with that one, but maybe that'd be a good one to do a video on also. But I wanted to get this uh, covered for you guys as a step one for crypto once you have your wallet created and your seed phrase stored safely then you're all set for the rest that you need to do for crypto for the most part because I think video three is going to be on signing up for an exchange and using the exchange for trading and then once you've purchased your tokens with the funds from your bank moving those tokens into your cold storage wallet. So I think uh, this video we're gonna do creating the cold storage wallet and safely securing and, and saving that information. So that is done and out of the way. And then once you're comfortable with that, then you, you'll be able to move on to the next video for using the exchange and getting your funds from your bank onto the exchange. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the video here with creating uh, first, we'll do a MetaMask wallet because that's one of the most common, and then we'll move on to some of the other ones. All right, so we're at the MetaMask website, and the address is MetaMask.io, MetaMask.io. Make sure that you're on the correct website before you click anything. I'm using the Brave browser because it's more secure than Chrome and some of the other ones. It keeps your information secure because there's a lot of hackers out there that will try to get your passwords with tracking your cookies and things like that. And I only use my laptop for crypto transactions. This, you know, the laptop, you can have a cheap laptop for like $100 or $200 or something from one of the big box stores out there, just a cheap laptop just for crypto transactions. That way you don't have any viruses or anything that could possibly hack your information. And I just keep my crypto separate from everything else just to be extra cautious. That's just my choice. That's what I recommend. And I've got uh, the MetaMask website pulled up here. So we'll just click on download. And then you're going to choose, is it going to be like Chrome, iOS, Android? If you're on your desktop, uh, supported browser is Brave is a supported browser. So they've got the extensions that you can click on. And you just click Add to Brave and then Add Extension. And it's going to go ahead and add the extension right here. It's installing it. It doesn't take very long. You can see here. So it should be installed. And I, go, I can go to the extensions. And, oh, now it's done. Okay, it's done now. And close this. Now I can go to my extension. There it is. It's added. So it's going to pull it up here. Now you can uh, pin this so it's up here on your browser. And we're going to go ahead and create a new wallet. If you if you already have a seed phrase from a wallet that you've created for MetaMask, you can import it here. So if you do want to transfer this to like your phone. You can do that and you can have the same wallet on your phone or any other device and just make sure that whatever device you're putting it on that it's secure. I recommend if you do do this on your phone that like if you have a Samsung that you have this installed in your secure folder on your Samsung phone. So if someone had access to your phone, they don't have access to your MetaMask immediately. They would have to get through the secure folder passphrase to get into your MetaMask to have access to it. Now we're gonna go ahead and create a new wallet here. And you just click, I agree. And you can choose a password, use capital letters, lowercase letters, and uh, use numbers and symbols. Try to make it as secure as possible because there's, there's hackers out there that have password generators. And if you don't have like, and it's usually like a 12 or key for a keyword phrase password with alphanumerical and 
symbols, they can hack your password within a few minutes with the software. If you have a more extended password, it can take several days. So you just click, I understand MetaMask cannot recover this password for me. And let's see, I guess the password I created is too weak. I just wanted a simple one for this demonstration. So we're going to go ahead and create a new wallet and then secure your wallet. It's going to play this video about your seed phrase. MetaMask is a new way to connect to sites and applications. On traditional websites, a central database or bank is responsible for controlling and recovering your accounts. But on MetaMask, all of the power belongs to the holder of a master key. Whoever holds the key controls the accounts. Your secret recovery phrase is your master key. It's a series of 12 words that are generated when you first set up MetaMask, which allow you to recover your wallet and funds if you ever lose access. It's important that you secure your wallet by keeping your secret recovery phrase. Yeah, it's very important. <laughs> if anyone gets so you can't them, they will have the let anyone get access to these 12 words. That's full access to your wallet. So whatever you're storing on, just be extra cautious. So what I do is I have like these, uh, they're called right in the rain. They're like an all weather notebook and you can take, and this paper that's in these is waterproof and you can take an ink pen and write your seed phrase in here. Cause I've got these because I have so many wallets. I, I don't have a ledger yet. I want to get one. Um, I have a treasure. Uh, but you got to pretty much, if you, I have like, I don't know, 20 wallets or something. So I keep them all in here, different wallets on different blockchains. And this is waterproof. So if it ever gets wet, like if, if let's say you had a fire in your house and you had this kept in a metal box or something safe and the firemen put out the fire, but there'd still be a lot of water in your house, but maybe this one get damaged because it's in a fireproof container, but water got in there. This would still keep your recovery phrase from getting destroyed. Now they do make these metal, they're like metal uh, keychains where you can put the, it's like a, a rod, a metal rod, and you can put your seed phrase in there with letters in order. You can put like a one and then your first seed phrase word and then a two and your second seed phrase word with these little uh, letters. But if you've got several wallets, that's kind of difficult to keep and maintain all of those. So that's why I just keep them in one of these. And just I have more than one in safe places. So if something did happen to one of them that... I wouldn't lose everything because I have another one in another location. So just be extra cautious and try to keep your stuff as uh, safe as possible because if something did happen and it like the, that part of your home got destroyed from a fire or a tornado or something that you would still have another copy somewhere safe and still have access to move your funds into a new wallet if you needed to. Uh, if, or if somebody actually broke in your home and found one of them, you'd still have access to them on your other one if you had time to move your funds into a secondary wallet. So we're going to go ahead and choose secure. Uh, what is it? Remind me later not to recommend. Okay, secure my wallet recommended. So this is going to show your seed phrase. It's not going to show it to you until you click reveal. And so this is, you don't want to let anyone else see this. You don't want to record this on your phone. You want to write it down. You don't want any digital copy of this. You don't want to save it to a document on your device in case something happened to your device and it got stolen. You want to keep it written down or on one of those metal uh, safety things like I was talking about. I forgot what they're called. But we'll go ahead and reveal it here. So you've got your 12 words so you're going to go ahead and write these down somewhere safe don't let anyone see them and make sure that they are secure so if anything ever happens to your device and it gets destroyed and you need to get into your wallet you can enter this seed phrase on any device anywhere and get 
access to your wallet again. The, the password really doesn't matter as far as anything because you can always use these 12 words to reset your wallet with a whole new password and everything. So even if a hacker doesn't have your password, if they have these 12 words, they've got full access. So just remember that. Don't give them out to anyone. This gives full access to your MetaMask wallet on any network. There's also a private phrase that you can get from your MetaMask once you create it. And that private phrase is for that specific network, like Ethereum. But if they if they just had your private phrase, they would have access to all your tokens on your Ethereum wallet, but not like your Polygon network wallet in, inside your MetaMask, because you can have multiple wallets inside MetaMask for your different networks that you're using, like Polygon and uh, a bunch of the other ones, Binance Smart Chain. So we'll click next. Um, probably, probably going to need to write these down. I think it's going to ask me. I'm just going to take a picture of it because I don't need this wallet. This is just for a. This is just for a example. I'm not going to keep this wallet. So I'm just taking a picture of it because it doesn't matter. But normally you would not do that. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to ask me for those words. So invite, I'm going to type that in here. That was number four. Number three was kitchen. They have to be in order. And eight was wonder. So you're going to have to have those correct. So it knew that you documented your words before it lets you move on. And wallet creation successful. Got it. And your MetaMask install is complete. All right, so you just click done, and then you can. Uh, it's going to ask you about this. I don't. I don't do this. Security alerts. Get alerts from third parties when you may have received a malicious request. I don't do any of this. I don't want any third parties having any access to any information in my wallet. So I don't do that. I don't know if you if it's a good idea to or not. So here we are. It starts off on the Ethereum mainnet network. So these are all what, what are called ERC-20 tokens, anything on Ethereum. So if you're transferring your tokens off from an exchange to this MetaMask, you're going to copy this address here, and then you're going to choose ERC-20 or Ethereum network for the Ethereum network tokens, if it's an Ethereum ERC-20 tokens. Uh, BNB is on the Binance Smart Chain. You can add other networks. They've got Arbitrum. Here's the BNB Smart Chain. You can just click Add and Approve, and now it's gonna. Now you can choose to switch to BNB Smart Chain. So now I'm on the BNB Smart Chain. For MetaMask, the address is always going to be the same, no matter which network you're sending the tokens to, or whichever network you're using it. The address is going to be the same. See, so it ends in Bravo 747 here. If I go back to Ethereum, it's going to still be Bravo 747. This is not the case for other wallets and for like if you're sending it to an exchange, they're going to have a different address based on the network that you're using. So just remember that with MetaMask and Trust Wallet, it's going to be the same address no matter what you no matter what you use. So uh, you can go ahead and add like Polygon is one that you may use. You may send some tokens to Polygon. You can switch to Polygon mainnet here. Uh, but the main one you're going to be using on here is Ethereum network. That's your standard ERC-20 tokens. So on here, we got a couple different things. We've got your assets, which are your tokens. We've got your NFTs, we got your activity, and this will show like any transactions you've done on the blockchain inside your wallet for this network. And your assets will be listed here. You can refresh this list in case it didn't refresh the, the tokens that were listed. You can import tokens. Now you can add certain tokens here just by typing them in. So if I put in USDC, that's going to pull up automatically and I can click next and import it. So there's USDC listed here. 
and I just go back to my account. So now I've added USDC. Now let's say you've got a token that you want to manually add that's not in this list. Uh, let's go to CoinGecko here and pull up uh, like Citus, for example. This, this is an ERC-20 address. If I type, if I go to add, uh, let's see, I'll import a token here. I'll type Citus. It may or may not be in here. And it's not. Citus is not listed. So this is where you want to go to custom token. And this token address here is on the, the contract address. Add to MetaMask. And you can see here that this is the token address. So we'll copy it. And we'll go back to my MetaMask here and click paste. And now it pulled up Citus and the token decimals, 18 decimals that automatically filled in. 18 is pretty standard for most tokens. Some are different. And if it is different, it'll usually tell you on their website. But it says, make sure you know that you trust this token before adding it. Well, I know I trust it because I pulled it off from the uh, CoinGecko website. That's going to have their official contract address. So I'll add a custom token and then import tokens. So I don't have any of these tokens. That's why it's showing zero USD worth of value. Another thing is to remember so you don't freak out when you're adding some of these tokens manually. If they're a newer token, they will not show the USD value. It'll show you zero USD even if you have like a thousand tokens just because it, it doesn't sync with some of the databases like CoinMarketCap that keep that token value information stored. These other uh, ones that are more common, they all have their information stored on CoinMarketCap, and I think that's where it pulls them from. So if you have a newer token, it'll show zero here for the value. And when you when you're send tokens to your MetaMask address, it's not going to, you're not going to see them in here until you import the token like I just did. You won't, so when you go to your MetaMask wallet and you don't see the token, if it's not like Ethereum, your, your tokens are most likely there, but you can't see them because you didn't manually add them. And when you go to add this to a new device, like your phone, you'll have to go through this process again to manually add those tokens so you can see them in your wallet. They're always going to be there on the blockchain, but until you add them to your MetaMask, you just won't see them. So don't freak out if you check your wallet when you first transfer them and they're not there. Now, if you had the token added and you still don't see it, then there might be an issue. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that... All right, so that's the basics for MetaMask. We've got... Uh, NFTs, you can see some of your NFTs here. If you have any NFTs, you can buy tokens. And you can go ahead and click get started. Uh, select a country. So I'm in the United States. So I'll do United States of America. And then it's going to, you know, choose your address or your state. And then you have different methods here for buying. They've got PayPal. Uh, wire transfer, instant ACH bank transfer. And I had an issue with PayPal working in here. It, it worked the first time. And then after that, it was saying I couldn't purchase it for some reason. I usually use my debit card if I'm purchasing directly into my MetaMask. So you can go ahead and click continue. And let's say I wanted to buy $50 as a minimum. And you can go ahead and, and add uh, your debit card. Connect, connect wallet, and you go ahead and click next and connect. All right, so you can get quotes after you've connected. It's going to show your wallet address here. So you can go to click quotes, and it's going to give you different providers to purchase your funds from. Uh, I tried Sardine. They only let me buy $50 worth. And after that, they didn't let me buy anything else. Typically, I use MoonPay. But the the fees were less with Sardine. That's why I wanted to try it. I think bank, the fees are a little bit lower too. As you can see, you'll get 40 Because there is a fee. 
So like with Sardine, you'll get $46 worth if you're buying $50 worth of tokens because they, they have a gas fee that they're going to collect and a transaction fee. Um, MoonPay, it's a little bit less, $45, but I use them all the time. I've used Transact too, but they're, you don't get quite as much for your money here. So you, I usually t typically use MoonPay. I mean, click buy with MoonPay. You would just type in your address and whatever you want to use there and go ahead and check out. So that, when you put your address in here and go ahead and check out, it's going to ask for your debit card information. And the first time you use MoonPay or any of these other ones, it's going to want to do a KYC, which is know your customer to verify that you are actually the real person using the debit card to purchase the money from. And it may go through a process of depositing a few cents in your checking account temporarily. <clears throat> and then you go in and your website or your app for your bank and you would check to see the exact amount that they deposited, whether it's 12 cents or 14 cents or whatever. And it just to verify it, it temporarily deposits that money in your account, just to verify that you are the owner and you are the one accessing that bank account, have access to that bank account. And it will also ask for like a copy of your driver's license or passport. And it will take a selfie picture uh, of you to verify that your face actually matches your ID. And that's just for the first time you use it. After that, the only thing you'll have to do is enter your email address and then it'll email you a code to put in like a six digit code. And then it's gonna ask you how much you wanna purchase. And then you'll just have to type in the three digit pin from in the back of your debit card in there to purchase the funds the following times after the first one. It usually, gets approved within a few minutes or so. Sometimes it takes a few hours and I've even seen a few people where it took a day or two to get approved. So just keep that in mind. You want to try to purchase the first time ahead of time because it can, it can take a little while. So, and then it'll go ahead and it'll, it'll go ahead and process these funds into your account. And that can take a few minutes for the funds to show up. And if you have any questions on this, you can message me in the Telegram group. The Telegram should be linked in my video description. And but after a few minutes, you should you should see your funds show up here. So we're going to go back to we're going to go back to the main uh, wallet here. And if you close this out. You're gonna have you're gonna have like the wallet up here, the extension. You can just click on that to get to your wallet. And so you'll see the tokens I've added here. It's just like a miniature wallet up here. This is what'll pop up anytime you need to sign a transaction. So if you're sending tokens to another wallet, you'll have to this will pop up and you'll have to collect accept the gas fee. If you're swapping tokens, you can swap ETH here. Uh, enable smart transactions. I don't do this. I just click no thanks. Uh, I guess you can do that. Enabling smart transactions will allow MetaMask to program programmatically optimize your swap to help. So maybe if you're a beginner, you, you might want to go ahead and do that. I don't typically do that. And uh, then go ahead and choose a, like if you want to sell your, ETH for USDC, if you sold like one ETH, uh, it's worth 18, almost $1,900 now. And you'd swap that to USDC and then you would hit review swap. So it's going to tell you one ETH is worth 1872 uh, USDC. And so you would click swap. Right now, I don't have any Ethereum in here, so I can't accept the gas fee. As you can see, the the gas fee to swap tokens right now on Ethereum is $19. It's all the way up to $65, so somewhere between $19 and $65 because gas is outrageous right now. So I try not to do any swapping inside my wallet unless gas fees are down to around a couple dollars. <clears throat> and during you know the bull run on that, this could be more. It could be over $100. It just gets ridiculous until, until Ethereum gets 
better on their gas fees, which hopefully that happens at some point. If you're on Polygon, you would use Polygon for your gas. Because we're on the Ethereum network, you need some ETH in here for your gas fee to do any swapping of tokens. And doesn't matter what token you're swapping. If I went ahead and uh, let's go back to my assets here. If I wanted to have Citus here, let's say I wanted to swap my Citus if I had a thousand of them. I guess 10,000 or 100,000 of them. I think I have 100,000 or more of them. Let's say I wanted to swap that for USDC. I would just review the swap and then they. I guess the gas fee is $60 to do that all the way up to $377. That's just insane. I can't believe how much the gas fees are right now. So the gas fees are more than the tokens worth on Ethereum right now. Usually that's not, not been the case. It's been a couple dollars recently. So just keep this in mind. There are gas fees if you're trying to swap tokens inside this wallet. Uh, if I go to Polygon here or Binance Smart Chain, Let's say I had, I had uh, let's say if I can add a token, uh, USDC. Oh, I guess I have to manually add any tokens in here because it's on BNB chain. It doesn't automatically detect it. So let's say I wanted to swap this for USDC. If I had like one BNB that's worth $324 and I hit review swap, the gas fee is 20 cents on Binance Smart Chain. As you can see, max fee would be 39 cents. So that's not too bad. Now you can edit uh, these gas fees once you, uh, let's see, I think it can, I don't know what this best of three quotes is. I guess there's estimated network fee, 0% slippage. So this is a little different for how they do it for for BSC network. So I'll just use the default typically for this one. But you would go ahead and swap your tokens out if you're trying to sell them in here and you can't get on an exchange to sell them for some reason. Uh, a lot of the tokens you'd be able to just swap out for USDC or USDT inside your wallet just to keep them in there if you, if you didn't want to send them to an exchange. Uh, there's so much to do with this MetaMask that I've got a MetaMask guide. But uh, if you wanted to send your tokens to your, let's say I want to send my tokens to my exchange. Uh, actually, let's copy. I could send them. I could send them to myself normally. You can do that. Like, you, so you could go to send, and then you'd paste your, the address that you want to send it to here, and it's going to pull it up. It's going to give me a warning. I don't have enough BNB in my account to pay for the transaction fee, which I know I don't have any BNB in here. But normally, like to send tokens, it's only five cents. So it doesn't matter how many BNB I'm sending, the gas fee to send them is going to be total 10 BNB, max amount. So this uh, gas fee is still five cents no matter how much I'm sending. But you would want to paste your wallet address in there and then you click next and it would have ask you to accept the gas fee and then you would click accept and it would send it after you send it you would get a uh I cancel here you would get a transaction here that it would show what if the transaction is pending if it's complete and all the information would be here and you'd be able to click on it and view the transaction on the blockchain to see if it went through or not. So that's MetaMask. Just wanted to cover that basics of that with you. And we can move on to Trust Wallet. It's pretty much going to be the same process for Trust Wallet. We can type Trust Wallet in here. TrustWallet.com. So you can go ahead and it's got Android, Google Play, and the App Store available in the Chrome Web Store. You can click download now. And let's see here. They've got 
I guess you have to go to the Chrome Web Store to add it to Brave. So you can click Add it to Brave here, <clears throat> add the extension, and then there it is. Trust Wallet's been added to Brave. So we could close this out. Um, doesn't matter. Let's go to like Open C. It's a NFT marketplace <clears throat> that a lot of a lot of people use. If you're not familiar with that, we'll go ahead and pin our trust wallet here. So here's your trust wallet. You can go here. You can import. You can import an existing wallet if you already have one created, or you can connect your ledger wallet to go ahead and uh, connect your ledger and set it up with trust wallet. So here you're going to set a password, and you're just going to go through the same basic process that we went through with MetaMask. All right, so I'm going to create the password and just click accept and proceed. It's going to be real similar to the MetaMask wallet setup. And you can back up your seed phrase. Never share your seed phrase with anyone. And here you can, here's your secret seed phrase. You click got it. And these are the words here. Now you can copy this, but I don't, I don't, I don't recommend copying this at all. You need to basically copy it down on paper. Don't copy it with your computer. Click proceed. Yeah, I got it. You got to put them in the correct order. So it knows that you copied them down correctly. Now, again, don't, don't take a picture of this. You don't want any digital copy of this anywhere on any of your devices. Manually write it down. All right. So click next. Uh, no, thanks. I don't want to share any of my data just in case I don't need any cookies or anything being sent to anybody. Uh, set trust wall as default. I'm not going to set my trust wall as default. I'll have my MetaMask or another wallet set as my default wallet because uh, default wallet. Basically, when you go to a website like OpenSea here, it's going to ask you to connect your wallet. And I'll give you an example of that. I'll choose my MetaMask here and you're going to see a pop up window in MetaMask. And this is how to you click connect and then it's now connected and you accept and sign the agreement to connect the first time. You usually get some kind of confirmation that you're connecting to a website. Only connect to a website if you know that it's safe. I know OpenSea is pretty safe, so I don't mind showing you guys how to connect to that uh, website. And then in your MetaMask, when you're done, you need to make sure you do this every time. It's kind of annoying, but you need to make sure that you do it uh, with all these wallets. You need to manually disconnect them. You open it up here, click on these three dots, go to connected sites, and there it is. I'm connected to portfolio. I don't know why it's showing portfolio.metamask.io. It should be, it should be showing open C. I guess it's my OpenSea portfolio, but that's just kind of strange. It should say OpenSea on here. But anyways, whatever website you're connected to, when you're done here, you want to disconnect. And then you just go back in and show connected. And account one is not connected to any sites. You want to make sure you do that every time. You can also want to, you also probably want to lock your wallet. Uh, you can click here and click lock. And that way, you if you step away from your computer, someone doesn't have full access to your wallet. It's locked. You have to put the password in. Anyways, I've got this trust wallet set up here. See it loaded some tokens in here. And it's got a bunch of these in the list already. So the trust wallet is set up. I'll go back to this trust wallet settings. Click open wallet. And there it is here. So you can have it on this expanded view. Oh, uh, also with the MetaMask to get back to the exp expanded view. See if I can remember the password I used. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, to get to back to the expanded view, you can click on the three dots here and click expanded view, and that'll bring up this this big window for your MetaMask in case you need to do that. There's other stuff in here that you can do in the settings. Um, 
you can go to contacts and add certain contacts uh, by wallet address. You can do and an Ethereum wallet address, and then you put like my, uh, if this was your trust wallet, but like, let's do, uh, I'll delete this. Let's go here and add the trust wallet address. And I usually use this on mobile mnemonic. So I click that to copy it. All right, copy the address. It ends in Charlie Alpha four eight. You want to just want to very uh, verify at least the last four digits of the wallet to make sure you're sending it to the correct wallet address. And if I go back to here to MetaMask, I can add it to my contacts so I know it's a safe wallet to add it to. So I'll type in my trust wallet number one if you've got more than one you put number two and so on and then click save so now that's in here i can click on it and you can edit it if you need to but what this does is if i go back to the if i close out this menu and i go back and i want to send like some eth i can click send and then it's here in my contacts so i know that's a trusted wallet address and then i can send the uh, ETH to it. Right now the gas fee to send ETH is about $4. That ain't terrible. What was it before? Like, I don't know. It was just pretty ridiculous. It's probably higher to swap a token, but but yeah, you could go ahead and send like whatever you want to. I guess it was $4.05 to send ETH. The other tokens are a little bit higher. And then you click next and sign the transaction for the gas fee and so on, and it'll send it. But that's the way you add it manually to your MetaMask. Uh, but going back to the Trust Wallet, same thing. Uh, you've got, let's see, I don't know how you manually, I'll have to get more familiar with Trust Wallet on, on the uh, computer. I usually use it on the PC, or on, on my phone, sorry. And you can also buy here, just like you can in the MetaMask Wallet. So Trust Wallet is very similar. And inside the app, I'll have to do a video on that maybe for you guys on how to use the app uh, on Trust Wallet because the app's probably more user friendly a little bit than the PC version for Trust Wallet. Another one I show, want to show you is Exodus Wallet. That's a newer wallet that's really good. It's more secure than the other ones. And I've started using this one now. And I'll have my link to the my referral link. It helps me out if you if you use that referral link. It doesn't cost you anything, but when you do any swaps or anything through the Exodus wallet, I get a little tiny kickback. I think two percent of the transaction fee or something like that. So it's very minimal, um, but it helps me out uh, if you want to use my affiliate link for that. I, I'd appreciate it. So I've got the download the Exodus desktop wallet or the mobile wallet and the Web three wallet. You can install it for Chrome and Brave. This is what I do. You can also do the uh, desktop wallet version. So I'll go ahead and add it to Brave here and add the extension. And this one you can actually do, I think you can do like KYC right inside the wallet itself. So I'll click here and pin the Exodus wallet. The only Web3 wallet you'll ever need, and that's pretty true. Uh, really like this wallet it's got a lot of different options for you know it's got solana built into it and everything so i'm probably going to start i had originally started using metamask years ago and so all my cryptos been in metamask and they came out with this exit exodus wallet and it seems to be a lot better than some of the other ones so i'll kind of walk you through this one just real quick i don't want to make this video too long it's probably longer than what it should be already. So you'd put my invite code here. If you want to use my my invite code, I appreciate that. I'll put it in the description and the pinned comment. Um, go ahead and use that if you would. I'd appreciate it. And like I said, it doesn't cost you anything to use it, but it helps me out anytime you do uh, swap for tokens inside this wallet. So I'll go ahead and create a new wallet. <clears throat> Welcome to Exodus. And... There you go. All right, so we're going to go into the menu here and you can go under security 
And you can back up your seed phrase here. Make sure you write this down somewhere safe. And then you can create your password here. You want to make sure that you do that. Otherwise, someone can just open up this browser here and start using your wallet if it's not password protected. And I don't know if there's a way to lock this wallet. Uh, there may be until you close your browser fully. So just kind of keep that in mind until you close your browser, the wallet's not locked. As far as I've been able to figure out so far, I'll have to do a little more research on this one. But there are other videos out there that cover all of these wallets in detail. And I can try to do another guide to get you a little bit more familiar with the features on them. You can go in here and you just, uh, if you want to receive tokens to your wallet, you're going to choose the token that you want to receive and it's going to give you the address here. So if you're sending it from an exchange, you would copy this address here. This is a Bitcoin network address specific for Bitcoin. So you would copy that and paste that into your app or website in the withdrawal address for your uh, exchange that you're trying to withdraw your tokens from. And same with Ethereum. Now, when you're doing the Ethereum, this is on Arbitron here. Make sure you're on regular ETH. So you got to watch out for that. I don't know if there's a way to... I imagine there's a way to disable these other ones from showing in your wallet. But you can also go to um, your portfolio here and click on Ethereum and then click on ETH here and then send, swap, buy and sell and receive. So you click receive and here's your Ethereum wallet address. And you do that the same with any of these tokens. Just make sure you're on the right network when you're getting the receive address. So you can send it from your exchange to the correct address. Otherwise, you could lose your tokens. And I'll cover that more when I do the actual exchange uh, video. And that, that may be the next video that I'm doing. That's pretty much all that I've got for these wallets, guys. If you want a more in-depth, uh, there's a lot more videos out there on each of these wallets individually. This is just kind of a rundown and basics of how to use them and how to get familiar with them. You'll want to play around with them and and get familiar with them. I know like MetaMask, they have a they have a like a test wallet or test network that you can play around with on there. If you change this address from Ethereum to one of the test networks, you can play around on there and you won't be affecting your actual token. Just make sure when you are in the wallet that you have it set to the correct network. So that's all I've got for this episode for you. I wanted to get you guys started and get your wallets created and secured. Keep those seed phrases in a secure place and make more than one copy just in case something happens to the first one. And just make sure that you're keeping it somewhere that nobody's going to find it or have access to it. You don't want to put it in one of those little home safes because somebody breaks into your house and they find that, that's the first thing they're going to do is they're just going to take that safe with them. If you've got one of these huge safes that are like bolted to the floor or something, it's probably safe to put it in something like that. Um, but, you know, that little booklet that I've got that, or even your treasure and that, they're so small that you can, you can stash these somewhere safe in your house. And I would definitely uh, put these in like a, you could get a vacuum sealed bag and put them in that to keep them vacuum sealed. This would be waterproof at least. Your treasure leisure is not going to be waterproof so if those get wet they're pretty much destroyed so you want to keep them in some type of waterproof container um, and you're going to anytime the only thing with the treasure or ledger is anytime you want to do a transaction with your wallet you have to have it plugged into your device that you're using to use it so that's why I don't I personally don't use them that much because I do a lot of transactions on my wallet and it's just kind of a hassle for me to have to plug it in all the time and then you got to keep it somewhere safe in your house to have access to it I wouldn't really keep it on you in case you got mugged or something someone would have access to your funds if they took your treasure or ledger so just some things to take to think about um, they are secure and they're probably they're more secure than like you're just using your MetaMask I know MetaMask is going to be coming out with two-factor authentication soon. They don't have it currently. Exodus is a good one to use. You can also refer your friends. I'll leave a referral link for Exodus 
in the description in the video and probably the pinned comment. And Exodus is similar to MetaMask and Trust Wallet, but it has more features. It's really a cool wallet. I've just started using that one, but I'm going to be using it a lot more with all the features that it has. So just keep that in mind. Exodus is another good one. And I'll put a link in the description for that. I'll put a link for all of these wallets in the description as well, so you can click on it. And I just wanted to cover these for you guys just as a first step to get this started and get this on your device and secure so you're ready to go when you want to move your funds off them in exchange. Also, there's certain tokens that you may want to purchase that are a little bit higher risk, but they're not on some of these exchanges or they're not on an exchange in your country. Like XRP, you can't buy it in the U.S., but you can buy it. I mean, you, you can't really buy it on Coinbase or some of those exchanges that are pretty much strictly U.S.-based. But you can buy it on like a KuCoin or whatever. But some of these tokens that are just brand new, they haven't listed on any exchanges yet or any known exchanges. If you're trying to buy them on like a Hotbit or one of these really small exchanges, it can be difficult because there's not enough liquidity so it may be easier just to use uniswap and swap usdc or eth for that token to have it and purchase it and that's when you can get it for the really low prices for some of these coins that just launched and just remember don't stick a bunch of money into these any of these coins that just launched but if they're a good project and something that you know i'm investing in because it's a good solid project or seems to be starting out then I may have to use Uniswap or PancakeSwap or one of those in my MetaMask or my Exodus wallet or my Trust wallet and in order to buy those because they're not available on any exchanges yet. So just keep that in mind. It's another reason why you want to have these wallets set up. But that's all I've got for today, guys, uh, for this video number two in the, uh, the Crypto 101 series. Video number three will probably be on using and signing up for the exchanges and I'm just going to do a couple examples they're all going to be pretty similar and I just want to get you familiar with that but at least now you'll have this wallet set up and secure so if you had somebody that wanted to send you some funds you could give them your wallet address from your Exodus wallet or your trust wallet or MetaMask and they can send you some funds that's all I've got for today guys I appreciate it and you have a great day thanks I grew up in a place where they told you what to chase Told you how to run the race, every move was on the page But I didn't like their way, had to fight and misbehave Had to find a way to change, had to leave to find my way Caught up in a daydream, I be in my mind up there almost daily It's how I pass time, no opinions safely It's how I understand what I want in this place, see Cause everybody wanna tell you bad things What could go wrong, what fame brings But Success is a finicky thing, and if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be I don't wanna